call to worship. We are witnesses of God's love being poured into us. We are witnesses of God's love, sharing it with each person we meet. We are witnesses to everyone we encounter, a little children like us, sisters and brothers in God's family. So let us pray. When we are blinded by anger, you pour out your love for all to see. When we wonder what tomorrow will bring, you call us to trust in you. When sadness fills our lives, you plant gladness in our hearts. God of Easter, touch us with your grace. You show us your hands so we may reach out to mend the broken. You show us your feet so we may walk with those the world passes by. You show us your face so we may know what our sisters and brothers look like. Risen Christ, touch us with your compassion. You open our eyes so we may see in God's love. You open our minds so we may welcome God's word. You open our lips so we may be God's witnesses. Spirit of hope, touch us with your peace. God, in community, holy in one, open us to your presence as we pray, as Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to sing the children's song, My God is so big, so strong. So strong and so much, nothing much that cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My things are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. If it were a normal a service, I can you know, give it all the afternoon to you know, each one of you, but at the moment, hmm, I'm going to enjoy it by myself. Well, a teacher gave a balloon to every single student, so they inflated it. After they tight and close the end here, and they wrote their name in here, yeah, and then they threw 
in the middle of study room. And teacher mixed all together and said to the student, I'm going to give you five minutes. So, find your opponent which has your own name. So, they went into and then find their you know, own balloon, which has their own name. Everybody throwing into, what do you think, how many have found their balloon? None. None. So after five minutes, stopped a, stu you know, a student, and then he ordered another one. Now, you go into and then pick the first one you picked and then find out what's name on it and then give the balloon to the person belong to. Within five minutes, how many found that balloon? How many? Everybody. Why? Everybody picked up one balloon and then, oh, there is a calf. Calf picked one. Oh, there is Michael's. Everyone got the balloon, not for themselves, but others. And then we can learn lessons. Well, today the Bible text is about a family. Yeah? If we're trying to find and seek my own happiness, everyone looking for their own happiness, it is very hard to find. But if we find a look for happiness for my wife's, my children's, my mom's, my husband's, everybody, and then eventually we will all have happiness. What the meme is, before me, we have to put someone. That is love. It's not greedy, it's not selfishness, but love. Looking for not my own happiness, but someone's happiness. And then that is the great love which God has. Thanks. Uh, yeah, now, Kathleen, you're going to stay in here? We don't mind. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you, you, you belong to us. <laughs> we don't want to send you out there. Yeah? Uh, oh, shame. I can hear the sounds. You know, uh, something like that kind of. It's not a, a noise, but what do you call that? The white noise? Have you heard the white noise? Yeah. Yeah. Something. You know, when you are in, uh, in the uh, library studying, it is completely none sounds you cannot concentrate. But there is a little bit you can concentrate. That's why while you are sleeping, the best thing is turn on that raining sounds and they make you sleep better. There is, uh, I think it is white noise or something like that. So, I don't mind. Do you mind? No, nobody. So, you can stay there, yeah, as long as you want, yeah. And then we are gonna uh, sing the Lord's My Shepherds. Shepherds have not want He makes me lie in pastures free He 
Today is from uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it didn't know Him. And dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves and just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might talk, take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is 
righteous. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Today, the Bible text is about the children of God. It's a, we are children of God. What? I'm not, as you know, I'm not a native speaker. So it's a bit, you know, you know I, I really want to someone to read uh, this verse 1. Because I, I'm not kind of expressing that exclamation mark. Yeah? And uh, verse 1, it is, See, what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. It's not that good, isn't it? <laughs> Probably you will do a better job. Oh, what a beautiful, isn't it? It's like in a, in a wonderful, extra, oh, oh, it's awesome. That is what it says in here. That is what John is talking about. Why? Exclamation mark in here. We are children of God. Well, it depends on who you are. The feeling when you hear we are children of God. The other meaning is God is our Father. Well, in a normal situation, it does not touch our heart. So what? Isn't it? So what? I've got father, mother, siblings, and grand, you know, grandpa, and then and grannies, and then, you know, uh, around their relatives or something like that. But, if someone who comes from a broken family, that means different, isn't it? Who has never, you know, uh, 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 family outings, uh, family meals, and family games together after meal, you know, uh, 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 gathering around the table and do the, what is the games, card games, and you know, all that, that kind of thing, and laughing, and then joking, and all kind of thing. That is huge differences. Now in here, we know the Israelites. Exodus chapter 6. And here, what God said is, I am the Lord, that I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slave to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty act of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Now, 430 years without shepherd, without master, without parents living on their own and being slave 430 years, heavy burden making all the hard works living as a slave, no freedom. For that, God said, I will be your God. What that means is, I know what you have done through, what you've gone through. Now, I will take care of you. I will protect you. I will punish who gave you hardships and I will become your father. Now, think about that. There is a someone who has no parents, no siblings on their own, living on, you know, on his own and then you know, pull, all the you know, you know, friends pulling him and some, you know, some, you know, someday someone came up along and said, hey, who are you pulling this you know, young man? If you do that again, you will take some punishment. And then him or she is going to be my under umbrella or protection. Hey, come on. Take him to his own you know, house and then you know, uh, take a shower and give him you know, a nice clothes and meals and come together. What do you think? That is different, isn't it? That is different. 24 years ago, 
I came to England. My, my father passed away long before. My mother passed away long before. Even Sarah's parents was, you know, passed away. When we came to England, there was no parents who can support us, who can pray for us, who can send passports. We have to live on our own. Living in England, the most en envy thing, a missed thing is when we see our friends and some Koreans who received the parcel from Korea. Their siblings or their parents send the parcel, Korean meal, Korean you know, uh, uh, ingredients and Korean snacks and all kinds of things. And even they send money to them to support. But for us, none. Then along with Tina, she came. Not after long weeks stayed. 1998, she came along. Well, she used to be a professor in Sweden for a long time. She made uh, you know, English teaching books, and then she you know, had that, what is the uh, you know, video clips, you know, one of that uh, broadcast. She was quite famous, but retired and then came back to England and lived in Bournemouth with her brother. But later, she kicked his brother out and accepted us and lived with her over two years. Well, Jonathan, he was born in there, not in the house. Well, he was born in the hospital in the early morning, you know, on a mothering Sunday, and then later, she said, oh, you don't need to you know, stay in the hospital, come back. So, even not all 24 hours, Sarah and I you know, you know, came back home. And then you know what? In here, you know, like a Kathleen, after birthing, in here, you can take a shower. You can go shopping after one day or two days, it doesn't matter. And eating ice cream, but in Korea, it's not like that. For one month, the mother has to be inside. Take warmth and then no cooking, no washing up, and all kind of thing. And then I, I told Tina, and then she did. She kept Sarah in her room for a month, and she cooked all for us, five of us. Not only that, we went into her house with a very, just a little money. We used two rooms and she used one room. When we went to holiday, she gave us discount because we are not using that room. Well, before she accepted us or we moved into that house, there was so many other English friends said to her, advised her, you're gonna regret it. Because we are not English, we are Asian. We have a different culture, we have a different smells, different cooking and all kinds of things. But she accepted. And it has been 23 years. She became our mother. While we are living in there, she taught us how to cook English food. When you are ill, not well, what kind of food you are eating, which she received from her mother. She taught us English. Even you know, around there, she taught us how to write English, how to write a pronunciation. And all that kind of thing. Even still, you know, when I was 35, I started English, speaking English. So, still I'm learning and then trying to. But it's not, it's not a great. I, I, I would like to speak like native, but it is very hard. My old muscles around me here, it's a bit solid. I'm trying to like, like that, you know, twist tongue or something like that. I'm trying, 
but not that great. But I'm still okay. I'm still okay. When I do that every evening, you know, now, she asking me, you know, now, to do soma. So I wrote in Korean and translate into English, and then said, and she said, I don't understand what you are talking about. That is not English. If you want to speak English, you have to write in English. Whether it's right or perfect, it doesn't matter. Do not translate from Korean to English. That's why, you know, my English is not perfect. But trying to think English and then speak English right away. To communicate in all kinds of things. And that's why I am here. After two years, we moved out from her house and went into uh, Eastbourne. But still, she is wagging. Well, since then, we adopted her as our mom. And she also said, now, even now, she said, James, you are my family. You are my son and daughter. Christmas and birthday, Commandment Sunday, every often we popped in to see her. And then we made lunch. She likes uh, roast chicken with the uh, apple sauce, yeah, and then, you know, cold salad. That is what we used to eat on Sunday with her while we were living. Every time we went um, to visit her, we always cook and make the uh, lunch. And uh, we, we prepare gifts. And also, we give a pocket money. She never ever thought like that. And that is being a family. Someone being my parents, my mom. And then I can understand. And we can understand that. And think about in here, the Israelites and Gentile. And God said to them, you are my children. Now, how about that? Who were we? Before we believed in Jesus Christ, who were we? In the Bible, Jesus said, you are the children of death. Well, in John chapter 8, it is said, you belong to your father, the devil. In Matthew chapter 12, it is said, you brood of vipers, vipers. And Matthew chapter 23, it said, you snakes, you brood of vipers. We are belonged to devil. We are under the authority of the devil. Slaves, but God adopted us. God adopted us by His great love. There was nothing we have got to show the righteousness and goodness. There's nothing, but God so loved us so that He gave His begotten Son, Jesus Christ, sent here, born in here. Same as flesh and died on the cross, took our shame and sins all together to give us freedom, to give us forgiveness. And that is what it says. So we are no longer under death, slave, sinner, accursed, but have eternal life, protection, prosperous future. Even, I, I can't, you know, quite often say, you know, a, 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 a ten-star resort. John chapter 14, what Jesus said, I'm going ahead of you to prepare the mansion. We don't need to pay any penny. When we, you know, go there, Jesus already prepared all-inclusive resort. Something like, you know, swimming pools and sauna, and then, you know, in the evening there is a buffet, and then a breakfast is delivered to you know, your room, 
and all kind of things, something like that. All inclusive. And that is who we are. The privilege as the children of God can have. Now, and here, verse 2, it is said, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope. What it says is that God adopted us as the children of God. And that if we are the children of God, we have hope. What hope? One day, when Jesus Christ appears to us, we shall be like him. And we shall see him. That is hope. Our hope is not in this earth, in this world. When I'm going to retire, I'm going to buy a, 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 you know, a huge house with a swimming pool and then you know, a, a, a huge gardens and then one side that is a green greenhouse and then some kind of shelters and then you know fruit uh, is, is there and flowers are there and then children can come in here and live in there not that kind of something like that not hope in here but hope and there living with Jesus Christ not a limited life but everlasting life transformed glorious body like Jesus Christ that is hope. And third, if we have hope as children of God, we do not sin. Well, verse 3, it is said, all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Hmm, it's quite hard, isn't it? What do you think? How do you see me, James John? As a holy man? Good man? Well, good man, yeah, it's okay. But holy man? Because I'm a, 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 a minister? Because I wear the dog color? All we know we are not a perfect. And the other one is, we all break the law. Little bit, little bit. I never ever killed anybody. I never ever kicked or anybody. But time to time, I hate someone. Even sometimes, very seldom, I don't like Sarah. Sometimes, you know, I don't like my children. Sometimes I break the law. Well, few times, you know, I paid the, uh, because I broke the, uh, what is the uh, truck lights. And sometimes, <laughs> in a red color, I should have stopped there. But in a hurry or somehow, I just passed. And I have to pay them. And sometimes, you know, I cut into in the middle. Sometimes I broke, you know, you know, someone's heart. I'm not perfect. That is our life, isn't it? A little bit, little bit. We, what we see as is what? You don't know me, yeah? But Sarah knows me. Much better than you. And Jonathan knows me. I'm not perfect. I'm not holy man. But what is in here is, as the children of God, we don't sin. The meaning is, of what, uh, verse 6 is exactly what it says. Is, no one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. What it means is, we can break law. We can commit sin. We can hate someone. But the thing is, if we are children of God, we don't do 
continuously. We don't do that kind of thing. We don't keep on sinning. Repeat and repeat and repeat. That is what Holy Spirit does in our heart. Someone say, I'm a, I'm a children of God, you know, I'm a Christian, but if there is no Holy Spirit, they do again. Steal you know, money or pickpocket, doing again and again and again, because there is no Holy Spirit. But if there is Holy Spirit in their heart, if they commit themselves to Jesus Christ, they know, they know, it's not right. So, children of God doesn't not keep on sinning. And last, verse 7, it is, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The other meaning is, if we believe in Jesus, the other meaning is, we are followers of Jesus Christ. So we follow Jesus Christ, not follow Satan, not follow some a great man or a philosopher or a politician or educational or whoever. No, but follow Jesus Christ. Children of God has hope and no keeps on singing and follow Jesus. My question is, are you the children of God? Let us pray. In these early days after the resurrection, we wonder what it all means. We can relate to the woman who fled the tomb with terror and amazement. We understand Thomas and his need for proof that would come only by touching the wounds and seeing the nail marks. We understand the fear and confusion that kept the disciples in the shadow cast by closed doors. We also keep company with the travelers on the Emmaus road who felt the strange burning of the truth and hope and love weaving into the sadness that consumed them on their walk. We find ourselves in the eternal movement between fear and faith, doubt and conviction, wonder and worry, and we trust that you are present with us. We trust that like the disciples, we will be able to stand and tell the whole message about this life that love is stronger than hate. Life has the final word over death, beyond what we can see with our eyes. There is a bond of humanness that draws and keeps us together. We pray for the anxiety in Myanmar, where is the tension? And the frauds of people who dies. And also the worldwide community where there is conflict, civil war, and hatred. And the midst, there are also voices of reason and peace. Perhaps they speak in whispers, but they speak nonetheless. May those whispers why to shout that proclaim the way forward with words and not weapons at the machines of greed and war trample the world and its peoples. We remember that there are seeds of justice and love and goodness and grace that are planted and watered every moment of every day. Rise early in the morning to prepare food at countless soup kitchens around the world. Search the night streets for lost children and shepherd them to places of safety. Keep watch 
amidst the sick and dying in countless hospitals and in countless places. Speak words of compassion in the face of hate. Eternal God, to whom all may come through your Son, lay your healing hand upon all those who are sick. Make your loving presence known to those who are lonely. Give your strengthening power to those who are weak. May those who lack be filled, those who mourn be comforted, those who worry be calmed, and those who seek forgiveness find it in Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for Amy, who has been to hospital, but she needs your help, Lord. She's going to have chemotherapy. But it's going to be curable. And she can have a normal lifespan in every moment of her life. Lord, be with her and give her your strength and your power. And put your hands on her with your healing power. And also, we remember Will, Carl, Jessica and Mandy, Rodney, Jill and Sophie, Jill and Miriam, Patrick, Nigel, Owen, and also Jim, who is gonna go into hospital tomorrow. And also, we remember Carl and Tony, who lost their loved Storm. Lord, give them your comfortment. And also, Tony, he needs your healing power. His knee is not good. There is a pain. But he has to wait a long queue. So, Lord, put your hands on his knee and cure him. And also, the queen and the family who lost the loved one, Prince Philip. We saw the picture on her own, sitting in that pew, lonely and sad. So Lord, be with her and family. And also all those known to us who are in special need of our in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing the last hymn, which is the Before the Throne of God Above. Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the get within. 
what I love can see him there, who made on hand of all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sin all is counted free. For God the just is satisfied, then look on him and pardon me. Then look on him and pardon me. Hold him there, the risen land, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable who I am, the King of glory and the praise. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood. My life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior. My soul is purchased by His blood, my soul is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God. Christ my Savior and my God. Let us pray. If the God who raised Jesus from the dead is for us, who dare be against us? We can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. Step out into the world in human confidence. There's nothing about to happen that God has not foreseen and no situation where Christ will not be there ahead of you, preparing a place and an opportunity for you. The peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, God's Son, and the blessing of God, all loving, the Creator, Redeemer, and Counselor, will be with us now and always. Amen.